The word of God says, as we behold him, we are transformed to his very image and his likeness. Just by beholding, by worshiping. In 1 John 3 verse 3 it says, He who puts his hope in him is purified as he is pure. Just by beholding him. Just by setting our faces towards him. But in faith. Not trying to fix ourselves. Not trying to make something out of our strength or our sufficiency. But the word of God says our sufficiency is of God. He is the one that qualified us. Paul says in Romans, there will be no boasting in the flesh. It won't be, I have done this. Or I've done this for the Lord. But my sufficiency is of God. It is by His grace. It is by His grace that we are here this morning. It is by His grace that we are called. He has called you as you are. He has loved you as you are. It's nothing that we can do to increase His love for us. He loves us. He loves us. And the Word of God says in Romans 8, what shall separate us from this love? It says nothing in heaven or be it on earth or beneath the earth. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Nothing. His heart towards you remains the same. It is we that change. And when we feel good about ourselves, then we accept the love of God. But when we do not feel so good, we think God does not love us. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. The Word of God says He loved us when we were dead in our trespasses. The Word of God says He is not a man that He should lie. He doesn't change His mind concerning you. If you feel you've missed the mark, you have missed the, your calling, God will bring you back to your calling by His call, through His Word, like He did to Jonah. When Jonah rebelled against the Word of God, God orchestrated His return. And in the end, He saw God's plan and He glorified His name. The call of God over your life is irrevocable, says the Word. It says in Jeremiah, I'm faithful to look after my Word, to perform it. He will look after His Word. The word says that God swears by himself. He swears by himself that he will do what he said he would do. And that is a promise to each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. If there's a word over your life or a calling, or know this. God's call over your life is irrevocable. And he will bring you back. I remember years ago, I... Um, I fear that I missed the call of God on my life because I went back into the world and I got involved in things that I should not have got involved with. And then I got back to God and I, and I, I had this fear in my heart that I've missed God, I've missed the call of God on my life. And then he gave me a dream about Jonah and I've never read the book of Jonah. And then I saw this man that rebelled against God, that did not agree with the love of God. And he ran. And God brought him back through supernatural and unlikely circumstances. And he brought him back. And even when he went back to Nineveh and he proclaimed the word of God and the people repented, he rebuked God because he said to God, I knew you'd forgive them. That's why I didn't want to go. And see God's heart that even if we rebel against him, he will take you and he will bring you into his calling. Because the word of God is irrevocable. It will not return void to God. It will not return void to God. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Um, Pastor Bates, I want to thank them, Pastor Volte and Pastor Bates, for allowing me to bring the word of God today. And um, I want to honor them for the absolute privilege to worship here and to be here and to bring the word. And... Um, Yes, let's start today's message. I want to go to James 4 from verse 1 to 8. James 1, 4. It 
says from verse, I'm not going to, otherwise it's going to be too long. I'll just read from verse 6. But he give grace, more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. When I see, when I think of myself as proud, I think of, I will do what I want to do. I will do my will according to my intellect, according to my emotions. I will rely on my own understanding. Like Proverbs says in, in um, three, uh, 3 verse from 5 to 7, let's go there. Proverbs 3 it says in all your ways, It says, trust in the Lord with all the, your heart and lean not upon thy own understanding. When people say God gave you understanding and intellect for a reason, you have to surrender it still. Do not re- rely upon our own understanding, our own sufficiency, because when we, we think we can, God spoke to us yesterday and now we can implement the same plan today and it doesn't work like that. We cannot live off of yesterday's manner new living bread each and every day. We cannot live of God's presence only entering it once a week. It has become a habitual dwelling from our side to dwell in the presence of God. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. In Job 22, it says, Agree, um, acquaint now yourselves with God. Let's go there. Job 22. Verse 21, it says, Acquaint now yourself with God. Agree with God and show yourself to be conformed to His will. And be at peace. By that you shall prosper and great good shall come to you. Amen. Each and every day, we need to seek His face. We need to seek His will. We have to surrender our will each and every day. Jesus, in Matthew, he had to, there's three distinct um, passages where He had to surrender His will. And the first was in Matthew 4, from 1 to 11. It says, after He came out of the waters, He was led by the Spirit of God to be tempted of the devil led by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil. And if you can go read it, because you, you, you have to understand, Jesus had to lay down His will. He said, not my will be done, but yours be done. In a place of, in the wilderness where He was completely alone, there was no support. There was no prayer group that you can ask to intercede for me. He was alone. Let's read it, Matthew 4. 4 verse 1, it says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And then we, we know the story, and he, was, he fasted, and the devil came, and he said, If you are the Son of God, turn these, these stones into bread. And that didn't work. And then the next one is, he came with Scripture. He says, Throw yourself off of this building, or what, uh, this And the Word of God says, I will give my angels instruction concerning you, and He will not allow you to to stumble. So the devil came and used Scripture to persuade Jesus to follow Him. And that's where we have to come back to the, the place where, what did God say? Not my will be done, but His will be done. It's an everyday surrender. Every day, Jesus, when Peter came to him in Matthew, when he said, um, after Jesus said, upon this rock I shall build my church, and he gave Peter this wonderful prophecy and this wonderful word, Matthew 16, verse 22. Then he said to him, Jesus said to them, um, he's going to be crucified. He told him what's going to happen next. And Peter, out of the good intention of his heart, out of the good intention of his heart, the enemy tried to use that good intention to persuade Jesus not to do it. And he said, get behind me, Satan. You see, Jesus, the vision never changed. Vision doesn't change. 
We have to hold on to that vision, to the will of God. It doesn't change. And the last one is what's in the Garden of Gethsemane in Matthew 26. Three times he he asked his his closest disciples to go with him. This is the the night before. And um, he asked them to just stay awake, pray with me. Stand in the spirit, pray with me. And what happened? They fall asleep. And he's alone again. He's standing alone. He comes, he says, Father, if it's your will, let this cup go by me. And then he said, not my will be done, but your will be done. And again, three times he went back. He he finds them sleeping. He said to them, can't you just stay awake with me for a while? And then we all know the story. But even Jesus had to lay down his own will. He had to lay down his own will. Each and every day is a surrender. We cannot just... Like I said, once a week, we we trust the Lord for a word to carry us through the week. No, each and every day. We need manna each and every day. If we read in Joshua, when they came to Ai, they tried to implement the same plan that God did for them yesterday. They tried today. And they went and fought against Ai without consulting God. And what happened? They were defeated. Because we have to, each and every day, come into the presence of God. We have to come into the presence of God. We cannot just take and run with, we have to dwell every moment of every day, we have to dwell with Him. And it's a habit that we have to cultivate. And it's by constantly turning to Him, turning away from all distractions, as Hebrews 12 says, in verse 2 it says, turning away from all distractions unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Each and every decision We have to come into that habit. We cannot rely on our own will, our own intellect. We cannot. Because when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of um, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they thought that's what happens when we we start to rely upon our our own ability to discern between good and evil. We think we can make a decision because God has given me the intellect to make this decision. But I cannot see tomorrow. I cannot see to into next week. I cannot see into the future. We cannot see past our noses. That's why we cannot rely upon our ability to discern between good and evil. To, between what is right and wrong. We cannot. In ev- all our ways, we have to acknowledge Him. In all our ways, it's a daily walk of faith. You know, we are in this habit that we go into the presence, we go out of the presence, and tonight we come back and we go in and come out. And, you know, that's not living with God. That's not living the life of faith. And in this time that we are living in, it is a, uns- a time of uncertainty. You know, we cannot afford to live apart from God. We have to say, as Moses said, Lord, we will not go if you're not with us. In every decision, in everything that we are doing, if you are not with us, we will not go. Because we are made to dwell with Him. That's His desire, is to dwell every day, each of every day with us. You know, when we, also when we start to dwell apart from God and we are in and out of the presence and we rely upon our understanding and our knowledge and we start to do things in the name of Jesus. And we think that validates everything we do. You know, it, it validates my business or it validates whatever. You know, Jesus said, they will come to me and they said, we've done these great things in your name. And he said, go away from me. I do not know what, who you are. A great example of this is the Crusaders. The Crusaders was, were supposed to be these representation of God's army on earth. And they had to go and fight and get the Holy Land back. And they did great atrocities in the name of Jesus. Great atrocities. And because of their atrocities, the Muslims and all other religious say, yes, you say your faith isn't filled with violence, but look at all these things with the Crusaders. And Jesus will say unto me, go away. I don't know who you are. 
Where did Jesus ever say, take my holy land by violence? He says, man, take the kingdom by violence. He said, he who lives by the sword will die by the sword. God, Jesus was a man of peace. Better to lay down your life than to take a life. And they misrepresented who Christ is because of they tried to do something in his name, something great. They, they, and that's us as well. We've done a lot of things in the name of Jesus. We, we've done things and said it's for your glory. No, it's not for your glory. It's for my glory. It was for my glory, not for yours, Jesus. We have to come back. We have to surrender our will. That's the key of dwelling in intimacy with the Father. We surrender. When, when Moses in Exodus 18 to 20, they're standing, they, they're standing in front of the mountain and God says, prepare my people, I want to meet them. And we see this mountain burning and it's like a furnace and smoke. And the word of God said, when Israel saw the smoke and the thunderings, they stood back. And the word of God said, Moses, they said to Moses, Moses, you go. Whatever God tells you, come and tell us. They were unwilling to surrender themselves into the presence where Moses was willing to go into the presence of God if it cost him his life because it's worth his life. The presence of God is worth my life. And that's only something that we can make out for ourselves. You know, we determine what the worth of God is in our life. And, and we can only make it out for ourselves. But for me, I want to surrender all. Because the only place where I'll find peace and joy is in the presence of God. Yes, we, we uh, Danny Knowles um, talked a couple of weeks ago, you know, they chased, she chased, she wanted these beautiful things, and it's, and it's nice to have all these nice things, but it's only nice for a while, and then you seek the next thing. You seek the next thing. The one thing that will ever satisfy you is the presence. And I can testify because you want more of his presence. You just want his presence. You want to, like Paul says, I want to know him. I want to be deeply and intimately acquainted with him. That should be our goal, not our ambitions. It doesn't mean that we have to live a life of a hermit or something. But in all my ways, I, I acknowledge him. Because where he will lead me, there will be peace, there will be joy, there will be rest. And whatever calling God has called you, maybe it's in business, maybe it's in the ministry, maybe it is wherever, but in all your ways, acknowledge him because there you will find peace, you will find joy, you will find rest. You will not find it apart from the presence because there's only life in the presence. We cannot generate life out of ourselves. It is only God that can give life that sustains us each and every day. It's, his, it's manna each and every day that gives life to us. Amen. Let's go back to James. James 4. We have to seek Him more and more. It says, verse 7, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Resist the devil. The devil comes, and he tempts us on our will. That's where he tempts us. And where there can only be a temptation if there's a desire. You know? If there's no desire, there cannot be any temptation. It's not that we have the desires. What do we do with that desire? Do we surrender it to God? Do we allow the enemy to, to tempt us into our desires, our will? Because we know it separates us from God. It separates us when we follow our will, our emotions, our intellect. It leads us away from God. You love God, 
Yes, you love God, but there are certain decisions, certain areas in our lives that we do not allow Him in. I said, uh, I think it was last year, I said, we, we are scared to surrender to God because we are scared of what He will ask of us. You know, what He will ask of me. But I know what the, out, the outcome is when He asks me. It will be peace. It will be joy and rest for my soul. All you that are heavy laden, heavy burdened, come to me. Surrender yourselves to me. So the enemy comes and, and the word of God said, resist the enemy. Resist the devil. We're reading of, in Genesis of Cain and Abel. <clears throat> Cain was the first one that took initiative to bring an offering to God. He was the first one that took the initiative. And then Abel came and God said he had delight in Abel's. And then you will say, but I was the first one. His brother probably saw that he, 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 he took an offering and then maybe I should do this as well. And then the word of God said he, in Abel's offering he had great delight. And then Cain was very angry and he was thinking of killing his brother. And then it says, God appeared to him and says, um, let's read it. It's, it's, it states it the same way as in, in, in James. It's in Genesis 4. He says in verse 7, If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at your door. And unto thee, shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And it says the same as in James. The tempter, the tempter comes. You, you are sitting with the, the, this unholy desire, your will, to do your will. And the enemy comes. It's so easy. Just give in to it. It's the easiest thing to just give in to our desires. It's so easy just to give and fall into it. But the word of God says, resist the devil. Resist him. Because his desire is for your life. When I was in the world, some, I brought myself under some, some under bondage of things out in the world because it's, it's so nice the first time and then it has you. It has a hold of you. It caught you. And his desire is for you to destroy you. And that's the purpose of the enemy. That is his purpose. But we have to resist. Bring him into submission under our feet. It is not the easiest thing when you, when you stand alone and nobody's looking and just to give in to your desire. There's no accountability. You're not harming anybody physically. But you are harming yourself. And it's the most difficult thing just to say no in that moment. But you know what? When Jesus said no to the enemy, when he was all alone and he resisted him three times and it just feels like it's Every time it's more difficult than the next. I mean, the enemy is coming with scripture and he's trying to tempt me to do my will and to give in to my desires. And he just kept standing. And in the end, the enemy left. And the word says that his angels came and ministered to him. There's no freedom in our will. There's no freedom in our, our will. It's only in the will of the Father that we will be set free that we will find perfect peace, that we will find joy. There's no life in the will of man. There's no life in the ways of this world. We see that in all our, you know, at the end of our days. If we're not busy with the will of the Father, it's an empty day. It may, might be successful in the worldly terms, but it's empty because in Ecclesiastes you see Solomon giving himself to all his desires and, we, and he speaks of the vanity and emptiness of his life. And we see that in our own life. You can have everything. If you don't have a life without God, it's empty and vain. And then he says, his conclusion is, this is the duty of man, to worship God to be obedient to his will. Only there we will find what we are looking for. You know, this man, 
had all the treasures and all the women and all the buildings and all the, the greatest kingdom. And it looked so godly and it looked so glorious and God has blessed me with this and that. But it's all vanity, emptiness, nothing. Because it fades away. It says in James 5, it says, your gold and silver is cankered and your rust of them shall be a witness against you. Because we do not trust in our treasures. We do not rely upon it. We do not look to it for our peace or our joy. Or we do not look to it. Because if we are looking to it for peace and security, we have created an, an idol and we are busy with idolatry. And that's the same when we want to do our will. It is idolatry. And we don't want to do that. In all our ways, we want to acknowledge God. We want to seek Him. We want to dwell with Him. And let this be your prayer. As Moses said, God, if you're not going with me, I will not go. Amen. Let us stand. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to take your offering, what you want to bring today to God, and I just want you... As we're going to pray, you can, after we pray, you can bring it. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, that through your word, you are strengthening us. You are building us. And, Lord, the word says that the work that which you started in us, you will finish. And, Lord, through the word, yes, there may be harsh things, but the word of God says he who God loves, I discipline those who I love because he wants to form something in us. And that is the statue of Christ. He wants his son to be revealed in and through you. That's why we address things in our lives. And each and every day should be a day of reflection. Lord, reveal to me where, where can I just, where, where do I have to surrender? I want to give it over to you because I want to live I don't want to live apart from you, Jesus. I want to dwell in unity with you. We want to come to the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God. To understand that in Him we move and have our being. Thank you, Jesus. We surrender all to you. We surrender to you in all our ways, in every decision, every transaction, every, every plan that we, we make. We just bring it to your feet. We won't be scared of what you will ask of us because it will lead us to peace and joy. Thank you, Father. Just turn towards Him. Like we, we sang at Nana, it says, all this world will fade away. All treasures, all, all things that man has strived for in their ambition will just fade away. But you will remain and let us be found in Him. Let us be invested in Him. Let us invest our life in Him, to dwell with Him, that He leads us, guides us in each and every day, in every moment. Do not be scared. Do not be afraid of what He will ask of you. He gives life. The world takes your life. The world just takes it. Its desire is for you. Your will. Its desire is that you will do your will. But we will resist. And we will say, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Not my will be done, but yours. 
We are moving away from the novelty of Christendom, Lord. We are moving away from the novelty and the tradition of our faith. And we are moving into the full and accurate power and truth of the faith. We are letting go of the traditions. You know, a lot of us are just Christians because it's who we are and in our culture. We are just Christians because that's the way we were brought up. And we do not live in the power of our faith. The Word of God says in Mark, it says it's your traditions that make the Word of God powerless. Because we are doing things without, you know, we're just going through the motions. We are, we are whitewashed graves. No, let us come into the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God, of our faith, the power of our faith. We are not domesticated by this world. We are sons and daughters of God. That is our identity. The world is not our, our identity. God is your identity. We will not allow culture or language or skin color to define who we are. We will not allow it to define who we are. For in Christ, we are a new creation. The old things have passed away. Look, everything has become new. There's neither Jew nor Greek nor freeman or slave, woman, man, in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. There's only life in Christ. And Jesus, we surrender all. We will not stand back and tell somebody else to go. And whatever God tells you, come and say to us, no, we will surrender into the presence of God in Jesus' mighty name. Let us be consumed by the glory of God, consumed by the light. For in the light, we find purpose. We find our true identity. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I thank you as we, we hold on to that which you want to give this morning. I thank you, Lord, that we let it be a gesture, Lord, of surrender. Let it be a gesture of our surrender that we will not rely upon our own ability, our own sufficiency, but our sufficiency is of God. You are our provider. We will not worry about the day of tomorrow, what we shall eat or what we shall drink, but we will seek you first. We will set our eyes upon you. And we surrender all to you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. You can come. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We worship you. Yes, Father, we worship you. Thank you, Lord, that we are growing in stature. Each and every day we are growing in stature until the complete and fullness of Christ be manifest in us. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Let us be formed according to your will. Lord, as Isaiah says, it, the clay does not say to the potter what you are making. The potter is making what he wants to make. So just surrender to the hands of God. His plans and his purposes are far beyond what you can, can think or even imagine. We know what his, his desires are for you. In Jeremiah 29, my, my, um, I want to read that. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah. For I know. 
29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans of welfare and peace, and not of evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. So his plans for you is that. So let go of your plans and your purposes and take hold of his plans and his purposes because the outcome, look at the outcome. So let us let go. Let us just let go. By faith we let go. By faith. By turning away unto Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And we thank you, Lord, that you are with us wherever we go. Thank you, Lord, that you are forming us, making us, molding us into your image, into your likeness. Father, I thank you for each and every one. Lord, that you are with them. There where they are, they can just turn to you. In a moment, turn towards you. And I thank you, Father, that you will reveal yourself more and more to them. Because we want to see your glory, Jesus. We want to see your will be done. Not our will be done. In Jesus' mighty name. Bless my brothers and sisters, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you heal, you give peace, you give joy where it's needed, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen.